The presence of the poltergast in the land has awoken many restless undead in the dungeon, in the underground, and even on the sea. Diana continued to bravely fight back against the undead, but most importantly, she needed to find a way to protect her new friends by keeping the poltergast from locating her base in the forest. Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Mod of Redemption Let's Play episode. We are playing as a druid class, and last episode we defeated the Eater of Worlds, the Goblin Army, and the Mighty Chicken King. And this episode, I think we are ready to go to fight Skeletron. First, I want to craft something that's been highly requested. It is the Sky Flower Seed Bag, and that's just the combination of the Sky Blue Flower, Leather Pouch, and some Cloud. So let's take a look at that. Okay, this looks pretty sweet. Another thing people had recommended that I craft is the Lost Soul Armor. And that's just the combination of small Lost Souls and the Ancient Brass Bars for the chest. And then I think the other pieces are just Lost Souls on the Druidic Altar. And I'm not sure if it's going to be better than the one we've got. Looks like we lost one defense. And this is what it looks like. It's like a ghost look or a marshmallow man or something. But the cool thing about this item is that it increases our spirit summoned and increases our spirit level. So that's a kind of a cool thing to mix with our bunnies. Oh my gosh, we shoot so many bunnies out now. And our squirrels. That's pretty awesome. Although our Ebon Druid's armor does increase the power of our seeds. And we've got so many good seeds right now. And I don't know. We'll just have to kind of play around with it. What I think I'll do is put this armor in our piggy bank so we can access it whenever we want to if we want to switch over to a spirit build. Here we are at the entrance to the dungeon and you can see we've got two platforms which should be enough to defeat the Skeletron boss. So let's go ahead and start this up and let's try using our sky blue seed bag. This one seems pretty powerful. Although it does use our mana up a lot. Whoa, we found our meteor. Man, I'm having trouble moving around this arena. My mobility is not as good as I'm used to. Okay, here we go. Now we're doing some damage. Kind of want to see how this ice stave does. Seems like it's doing all right. Okay, well, we've got the skulls shooting out now. Okay, we've almost got the hands taken out. Now we just need to focus on doing a ton of damage to the skull, which we can do with that weapon right there. Okay, I think we've got a good pattern here. While we do this phase, we should activate our buffs and spin around them, and we can throw this attack. The homing sky blue flower. Whoa, that was close. This is the real damaging phase right there. Oh no, what is going on? What is going on? Why did I mess up there?
Oh, I'm used to like a death mode Skeletron, and I'm struggling with an expert right now. Oh no. Okay, I think we got him right here. That was scary. We got the Bone Glove, and we got the Book of Skulls, and a Diamond, and a Lesser Healing Potion. With the low defense that we've got, just messing up a few times really was pretty scary. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and break this. With Vein Miner, we should be able to get all this ore really easily. Although the sand's going to start collapsing on us. Oh no! <laughs> so much collapsing sand. Okay, let's knock out these enemies. And you can see we've got a special song for this. And that's from the Extra Calamity Music mod. I really like this song. And it's like you hardly ever get to hear it because it only is a Meteor Biome song. But when you do, it's pretty awesome. And I think we've got pretty much all the Meteorite we need. There's probably some pieces scattered throughout, but I think that's probably good. Well, maybe I'll knock this piece out and then we can head on into the dungeon. Well, this is an easy path to go down. Sometimes it kind of zigzags a lot, but this one's very linear. Whoa, we barely missed that. There we go, there's a trap right here. Got a gravitation potion already, a chest. I didn't even realize we had a key. It's kind of nice. So this weapon right here is incredible for the dungeon. Ooh, it's pointing towards the mechanic because we've got the life form analyzer still. Sweet. We got the mechanic. We can sell some of this stuff to her. Oh my goodness. We're getting surrounded. There's a lot of enemies down here right now. But we've got a key so we can open up one of these. Apparently there's a stave we can get in the dungeon and it can combine into a Knight's Edge type weapon. So we definitely want to look for that. Ooh, another key. Excellent. Oh my goodness. I just realized the life form analyzer also leads us to dungeon slimes. That's incredible. Yeah, I need to use the life form analyzer more often. I don't know which mod adds this little arrow, but it's very useful. Okay, well, we've got another magic missile. The main thing we're looking for is the shadow key and cobalt shields, and the stave from the dungeon. Ooh, there's a druid. What does this druid just drop? A gloom shroom bag? Okay, that's pretty sweet. I'm excited to see what that does. Whoa, this one's sweet. It's like a sentry. Oh, and we got a druid hat? It looks like there's a lot of good stuff we can get from these dungeon druid skeletons. I love finding those wooden chests in the dungeon. And we got a shadow key, excellent. Ooh, and an alchemy table, that's always good. Although we're not using too many potions this game. I love that these can shoot through the ground. It's incredibly good. And we got a yo-yo just there, and it looks like We've got a dungeon slime right over here. Whoa. We just got a dungeon warhammer. This thing is so huge. That is so cool. That's definitely a mod of redemption item. I've never seen that before. One thing I love to do is add this spike to my vein miner. You can see it's so satisfying to see all the spikes disappear. Well, it looks like we've kind of reached a dead end on this side, so we probably need to circle back over here and explore this part of the dungeon. Well, we got another chest right here, and it's the blue moon. There we go. We just got the stave. Yes. Ooh, this one bounces around. It's like a water bolt stave. Okay, I love that. This one does a lot of damage, too. I feel like it's stronger than a water bolt. Ooh, we got another one right there. We still need to get a cobalt shield, though. So hopefully we'll be able to find one of those soon. 
Whoa, look at this room. There's so many enemies. <laughs> That's awesome. So we're finding a ton of these gloom mushrooms and it looks like it crafts into some druid armor. So gloom mushrooms and these bones. And it looks like we need about 50 of these gloom mushrooms. So I think we are pretty much good to go. There we go. We have the cobalt shield, finally. We might as well use up our last key right here. And now let's head back to base. And with the clover having moved in, it looks like we have actually used up every single one of these houses already. So I may need to build some more off to the side or something in between episodes maybe. Or we could even use this island up here to put some NPCs on it. I'll have to think about it. Well, now that we're back at base, let's go ahead and craft this gloom armor. Looks like it could be a good upgrade. And let's see what it does to our defense. We're at 26 right now, and it moves us up to 31. And it looks like we were at 27 before, and we're at 27 now, so our damage remains the same. But it says we're immune to knockback, and it increases our night vision. That's pretty cool. I like that it gives us plus 40 max mana and plus 40 max life. It's actually a pretty cool armor set. And here's what it looks like without any vanities. I really like how there's so many different armor sets to choose from for a druid. Now we can craft the Knight's Edge equivalent for the druid class. And that's the upgrade to this stave right here, the Lunar Crescent stave. So we've got the Demonite one, we've got the Donjon stave, we just need the Grass and the Molten. We also need to find the Anklet of the Wind so we can upgrade to Lightning Boots. So let's head over to the jungle and explore for a little bit. I haven't actually gone through the normal entrance to the jungle yet because I keep going like and mining nearby and getting in from the side. Ooh, we have the Queen Bee. I completely forgot about the Queen Bee. Let's go ahead and kill the Queen Bee right now. We could probably make a quick Queen Bee arena right here and just blow all this stuff up. Doesn't need to be too fancy because I have a feeling we're going to do really well with the items we've got right now, but we might as well defeat the Queen Bee. Maybe it will drop something special for the Druid class. Let's go ahead and give this a try and see how it goes. We need to get away from the boss. <laughs> okay, we're in our arena and now we can start throwing these down. We should be able to do really well. These are all homing in, although we need to make sure we stay close enough to the boss. Maybe let's go ahead and activate this and see what it does. Ooh, this is pretty sweet. Yeah, we're doing so much damage. And we can de do the little dash attacks and avoid damage. So many of these hitting it. Oh my gosh, we're so overpowered right now. This one even does better, I think. Okay, and this is amazing because all of the little minions give magic back to us, so we don't have to worry about our mana really running out. Oh yeah, now we can crank out the damage. So much damage, and we immediately kill all of the spawns. Oh my gosh, we're taking hits though. It's getting crazy. There we go. <laughs> Maybe the beeswax will craft into something. No, it looks like it's just summoner and some weapons out mod stuff. But it's still awesome to kill the queen bee and we got the witch doctor who just arrived. So that's good. Now let's continue exploring the jungle. Well, we found a minecart track and that's good. It'll help us find some chests quickly probably. Ooh, we found a tree. Excellent. So let's bomb this out and go get the loot under it. Well, we got a feral claw. Whoa, I think I see something happening down there. What is going on? It's like a special enemy or something. Whoa. It was like killing other enemies. Interesting, it dropped a rusted sword fragment. Looks like that crafts into this pretty cool looking sword. We need to get the blade. And then the sunset helmet. Very interesting. Okay, so this is from a jolly madman. 
Okay, that was what was killing all the other enemies. I like how there's so many just like random unique enemies under the ground. Like these slightly stronger, they're like not mini bosses, but they're just like stronger enemies that drop these larger lost souls. They're pretty sweet. Ooh, sweet, we found another tree. This could be good. And we got Hermes boots. Whoa, we have a nymph. Nice. And another failed chest. Oh my goodness. Ooh, but we have another one right here. Excellent. But this one's got a boomstick. If we don't get the anklet of the wind from this tree right here, I think I'm gonna go buy it from that NPC that sells it. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna head back to base. We've explored more than enough of this jungle to have found it normally. This NPC named Alexander should be able to sell it. Ooh, he sells frog legs too. Yes, there we go, the anklet of the wind. I usually try not to just buy stuff straight from this guy, but sometimes it's just really nice because when you're having trouble finding stuff in the world, it can be a little bit frustrating. Plus ice gates, we might as well because we have not found ice gates and we've explored a ton of the ice biome already. So now let's do some crafting. We can craft lightning boots from the anklet of the wind, spiked aglet and the specter boots. And then we can do our Frostbark boots, and that's just lightning boots and ice gates. So I noticed that it's a full moon, so I went over to the ocean biome, and I'm hoping we can find the sunken captain. I've made a little arena and put down a clock so we can see the time. And let's go ahead and just use a battle potion and set down some water candles, because I think he'll spawn faster if we have a higher spawn rate. Oh my gosh, he just spawned. It's the sunken captain. It's all foggy. This is so cool. And he summons little pirates, ghost pirates. We're able to do a lot of damage. So he summons the birds and he summons these little deckhand guys. And I think that's most of what he does, plus he does just kind of normal melee damage if you get close to him and he does the contact damage. Okay, let's go ahead and destroy him. Boom. Whoa. He actually drops a whole bunch of loot. Nice. So he drops 14 ancient coins and this cutlass. That's pretty sweet and an eye patch, some coral. And all you need to do to summon this boss is have this sunken message, have it be a full moon, and then just basically wait in this biome. And now that we're back at base, there's another thing I think we're able to craft now. It's the grass stave. And this is part of the recipe for the lunar crescent stave. So we'll definitely need that. And here's what the grass stave does. Shoots out two leaves at a time, pretty good. In between episodes, I built an arena so we can farm up a mini boss, and hopefully we're going to be able to get him. I've been wanting to get him for a while, but he hasn't been spawning. So I just put on our soul-based armor, and I'm going to switch over to some soul equipment. Whoa, we are doing Featherfall? That's weird. Is that part of this ghost armor? Wow, with frog legs and Featherfall, we do some pretty good mobility. Okay, so let's go ahead and try using our squirrel and our bunnies. This is pretty sweet. There's like a standing squirrel thing. And our bunnies are pretty powerful. Now that I've got all of our gear, we are ready to go. So I just put on a battle potion and let's put down a water candle as well. And then hopefully we will be able to find this mini boss. So apparently this item right here will get us more lost souls. It's pretty powerful though. And it's nice that it doesn't use any mana. So after farming for quite a while, I went ahead and crafted an ultimate battler. 
That's a Louis AFK item. It's just the combination of the battler, tissue samples, vile vicious mushrooms, and the battler is just an unlimited battle potion and an unlimited water candle. So not too tricky to craft, but it is a pretty awesome item. So let's go ahead and activate it. All we do is open the interface right here and turn it on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and you will see the crazy amounts of enemies show up. Oh my gosh. This is a perfect weapon for this because of all of the extra attacks that it does and how it pierces everything. You can see it's pretty easy to knock all those guys down. Ooh, we even have, oh, what is this? A grand larva? Interesting, I wonder what that was. Ooh, what is that? It's a weird sort of smoky thing up there. Whoa, it just said the caverns went silent. We got them. It's the Skull Digger. This is so cool. I knew the ultimate battler would get him for us. He's apparently really rare. That is so cool. He's got like a tail with a hook. Or is that like a whip that he's got? And he shoots out all of this kind of bullet hell stuff. And it's got like a special music. It's kind of like a sad music, to be honest like a thoughtful music i guess okay i think it's time to kill him i think we're gonna kill him pretty quickly once we use some of our good weapons because we are pretty high level right now dang this is cool i was getting worried i wasn't gonna find this guy because i've tried farming him up several times on previous episodes and we finally got him And there we go. We got the abandoned Teddy. Lots of people have told me about this item. And then we have the Skull Digger's Skull Digger. Whoa, that's cool. It's like a huge flail. And now with all of our ancient coins, let's go down to the vendor that sells the summon for the Keeper because it is time to fight the Keeper one last time. There we go, we got the tablet. Apparently, if we fight the Keeper with this Teddy Bear, in our inventory that we got from the Skull Digger, there will be something special that happens. So let's do this. And let's see how much damage we can do now. Whoa, the Keeper has awoken. It starts to remember something. It's smiling. Pain, anger, sadness, all those feelings were washed away. She only feels at peace. Thank you. Oh, that's so adorable. And we get a Keeper Trophy and a Keeper Circlet. Whoa, what is that? That was such a nice little cutscene and a really cool Easter egg that if you get this teddy bear, you can help the Keeper and make her happy now. Well, I think that's a great place to end this episode. We defeated Skeletron, we did the dungeon, we defeated the Queen Bee, we also defeated the Sunken Captain and the Skull Digger and set the Keeper free. Wow, that was a jammed packed episode. Next episode, we'll be able to fight a special boss from the Mod of Redemption pre-hard mode and prepare for the Wall of Flesh. We can probably even defeat the Wall of Flesh next episode. I hope you all are enjoying this series. It's been so much fun to make. If you are, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.